Well, the exciting thing about this project was there's it's not really been done before. There are a few very slim volumes which present a range of poetry on London, but I've put together about 760 pages worth of poetry of London. So uh, what was so exciting was going through from early medieval times to the present day and just finding the uh, poem after poem which referred to London, the same places, someone like Cornhill gets mentioned an awful lot, or St Paul's. There's a whole um, category of poems about St Paul's. Um, first the early St Paul's before it was burnt in the Great Fire, then Sir Christopher Wren's St Paul's. So um, that was, I, I had a sense of putting together something that had never been put together before. It was a fairly random process in some ways, as I think all anthology making is. You, there are some poems about London that are in your head and that everybody knows, so they become, they choose themselves. I also wanted to represent as much of the different uh, areas of London, like North, South, West, East, um, poems of the East End, poems of South London. Uh, poems of North London. So I had not only kind of quality to think about, but variety and topography. And I also wanted to get range of different sort of languages or dialects in. So poetry by such as James Berry, who uh, arrived in 1948 and who writes about the Windrush uh, experience and arriving in London from the Caribbean, not knowing anything about London. So because London's always attracted so many different kinds of people from different places all over the world, uh, inevitably you get lots of different um, kinds of language being used in poems. I mean, some periods don't mention London very much, annoyingly for me as I was going through it, and others like the 18th century mention it all the time. So yes, in the 18th century, obviously you get a, um, a vision of London as a new Rome because the many people figured London at that time as similar to Rome, the neoclassical period. And um, London is celebrated in terms which are similar to those in which Rome was celebrated. It's also attacked by satirists in, in ways which are similar to the way, uh, say, Juvenal attacked Rome. Um, and whereas the Romantic London is a much more sublime London, um, occasionally, um, uh, Victorians don't talk about London that much in poetry is interesting because of the novel coming in uh, the novel became the main um, medium in which uh, London was described and it's not until the end of the century when uh, London poets start reading kind of Baudelaire and Whitman that they think well maybe we could do something similar with London to what Baudelaire had done with Paris or New York uh, to what Whitman had done with New York. So it's not until the sort of 1880s and 1890s that you get a kind of the beginnings of a modern poetry of London, but that feeds through into T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound, who um, read a great deal of poets such as Thompson and Simons, and they become um, the creators of a what we call modernist London, which is much um, a, a modernist London, which is still, I think, one of the dominant ways in which we see the city today. It's a London thing. That's a quote from the last poem in the book by a young poet called Aaron Warner. Uh, and it's said by somebody on a night bus and he's maybe a bit drunk, but he shouts out, it's a London thing. And from that, he's actually quoting the slogan of an estate agent, but it's stuck in my mind as a particularly <laughs> resonant way of trying to uh, define what it is about London poetry that makes it different from other kinds of poetry. It's always got to have a London thing about it. And the London thing works in, if you're in London, you know you're at the center of something. Um, and that affects the way people behave in London and it affects the way people write about London. For good or ill, they're at the center of something and there's lots of other people competing in that center. So it seemed to me that the London thing was what I was after. Uh, as I was scouring um, uh, poetry books from the 14th century, 1350s indeed, to the present day.